Dear friends, brothers and sisters, today the Iranian regime, the world's leading sponsor of terror and serial abuser of human rights, calls on this day to Palestinian and other Muslims and freedom-loving nations to liberate Palestine, i.e. destroy Israel, and undermine any chance for peace between Israel and its Arab and Palestinian neighbors. This is the essence of the so-called Al-Quds Day Parade. There is nothing else, and it has to be condemned. For several decades, this demonstration of hateful anti-Semitic and anti-Israeli incitement has taken place in Berlin, instigated by the Iranian regime and carried out through its proxies, the EZH and the EGES. And here, in the center of Berlin, in the heart of Germany, we say on other, more solemn days of remembrance, Ni Vida, never again. And I think it is about time this concept applies to this demonstration. This should be the last demonstration that should be allowed in, Iran, in Berlin and on European soil at all. Berlin has led Europe in other issues, like the recent resolution in the German Bundestag condemning unequivocally anti-Semitism and BDS. Berlin should also lead the world in stopping this demonstration of hypocrisy. Freedom of speech does not guarantee the freedom to spread anti-Semitism, hatred, incitement, calls for the destruction of Israel, and even the denial of the Holocaust, in which the Iranian regime excels. As the leading state sponsor of terror in the Middle East, in Gaza, with Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, in Lebanon, through Hezbollah, and I want to hear, thank Andreas Giesel for his very important statement saying that Hezbollah, the complete part of Hezbollah, should be branded for what it is, a terrorist organization. <laughs> Iran works in Syria through the Quds Force of the IRGC, a declared terrorist organization, and other Shia militias in Yemen through the Houthis, and even it has been, Iran has been working and operating on European soil until even recently. <coughs> and it is the last country on earth that should have the freedom to undermine the peace and tranquility of the great city of Berlin or peace in the Middle East. And that is what, that is what it wants. But the Iranian regime is not only the most blatant state sponsor of terror and instability, it is also today one of the greatest abusers of human rights of its own people. The Iranian regime's documented persecution of women, homosexuals, religious and ethnic minorities, the execution of minors, execution of adults without due process, suppression and crackdown on journalists and free press, torture, floggings, amputations, need I go on? In March of this year, Nasrin Sotuda, a lawyer and activist for women's rights, and think about this, was sentenced to 38 years in prison and 148 lashes. This is not just evil, it's medieval. <laughs> so today here in Berlin we are hearing lessons on morality from this regime which has so profoundly oppressed the noble Iranian people. And I want to emphasize here, Israel does not see the Iranian people 
or even Islam as an enemy. But Israel regards the Iranian regime as one of the greatest threats to peace in the Middle East today. Just as, as we speak, the United States, Israel and other allies are working to promote a renewed political process in the region, there is nothing more than peace and stability that scares the Iranian regime. The Iranian regime only sustains itself through wars, bloodshed, insurrection, terror in Iran itself and in Syria, Lebanon, Yemen and Gaza. Only today, an impeccable source, the head of Hamas, thanked on the record in a video Iran for supplying it long-range missiles through which it would be able to continue to target Israeli civilians. Do you need any more proof than that? Ultimately, we should have no doubt about what is at stake here. Despite the sea of hatred and despair that Iran promotes, I still believe, and Israel still believes, there are forces of moderation in the Middle East that can prevail and fashion a future of dialogue, of tolerance, coexistence, and peace in the region. What happens today and every day in Berlin and other real freedom-loving nations should be to encourage and fortify those who want to build bridges between our peoples and not those that seek to burden them. Thank you.